Hi guys, Zane here, and you're probably wondering why I'm wearing headphones today. That is because I'm going to be doing a quick review of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood, which I listened to via audiobook for my March re read book. And because I actually first read this about a year ago, I actually filmed a review of it on my channel back then. So we're going to check in with Young Dane, and we're going to see whether my opinions on this book have changed or not. Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a review of The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. Very nice, very nice, Dane. Okay, all right. Let's skip in a bit. I'm allowed to skip into my own video because I was there at the time, you know? I can't help but noticing that I'm wearing my old uh, red Fitbit. It's, it's uh, black now. And actually, I had a blue Fitbit in between then as well. So let me read you the blurb here. We don't need the blurb. The first thing, actually, is the fact that it's the Republic of Gilead. Now, I don't know how often that word is used... I mean, it does seem like a fairly typical kind of fantasy style name. So yeah, this is because uh, the word Gilead just makes me think of the gunslinger in Stephen King's gunslinger books. And uh, yeah, it still does. And it still did on this read as well. By the way, I'm only going to skip in and get a few different highlights and whatnot. I'll link to the full video below. But I don't want this to be because this was like 25 minutes long. And I want to keep this under 10 if I can. So anyway, let's see what else old Dane has got to say. So I don't know. Hey, Google. Oh, he's, he's asking his Google Chrome. And we'll talk it through and then I'll give a rating at the end. That's how book reviews work. Now, what Sophie and I were both talking about is that in contrast to maybe some other dystopian novels, this one does actually, you know, it starts with the story and the world building happens while the story's going on. So you never feel as though nothing's happened and you're just being told stuff. You're constantly experiencing the story and that's, you know, you see the world through the story. Definitely agree with that. That's sort of still very much a thing. I think that's what this book relies on. I also mentioned there the first time I read this, this was a buddy read with uh, sophisticated books. So shout out to Sophie. And what I quite like is even just some of the bits of dialogue and the, you know, the semantics and the meaning of things have been very carefully thought out as well. So I'm going to just read this little paragraph here. Fraternise means to behave like a brother. Luke told me that. He said there was no corresponding word that meant to behave like a sister. Sororise it would have to be, he said, from the Latin. He liked knowing about such details, the derivations of words, curious usages. I used to tease him about being pedantic. Luke sounds like the kind of person that I would like. That does sound about right. I mean, there is a lot to do with the meanings of words throughout this book. And one of the things that's really interesting about The Handmaid's Tale is that all the events of the book take place not too long after the descent into this dystopian world. So we're at a point where the characters can remember a time before it. And I think that makes it really interesting. I, I still agree with that and I think that's quite important especially with at the end where you get the kind of the historical note on The Handmaid's Tale. I actually remember in this uh, when I first read it I wasn't too fond of that. My opinion has kind of changed since then. Basically when I first read it I thought that it would have been better off it if it had ended on the ending as opposed to then having this kind of historical note on the document and to a certain extent I still agree with that. But now that I know that Atwood is bringing out like a sequel to The Handmaid's Tale, I can't help but wonder whether that's going to focus on what happened in between. So not necessarily with Offred as a, a character c carrying on, but with whoever kind of takes her message and then smuggles it out, you know? Basically, some shitty things have happened between people in our world. And sometimes, you know, the truth is scarier than fiction. And what Atwood's done is taken the truth, turned it into fiction and made it even scarier than that. Like... It was madness. That was pretty deep. <laughs> and that's a definitely a theme throughout this. Like all the way through, you can't really trust anyone. Even at the end, you then discover that Offred, you know, all the characters that we've known that she's talked to us about weren't necessarily their real names. So this was when she walked past the guards and she was saying that, that you know, that's the only power they have and they're... Um, I think they're not even supposed to they're not even supposed to masturbate or whatever but they don't have women of their own in this society and so the the handmaids enjoyed kind of being coquettish I suppose um which I think is you know an interesting thought I, I would imagine you would do I mean it's not nothing to do with like gender wars or anything like that it's literally just if you can see some power in this world you're going to take it cuz any power is better than no power at all I'm going around this in a really long kind of way of getting to the point here, but I, what I was trying to get out with this is that it's not a society in which, despite the fact that, you know, men are clearly the superior, 
you know, gender in that society, they're still not happy. And it just goes to show that, you know, freedom and equality are good for everybody. Even the, you know, the high up men in, you know, well, even the, the commander, I've forgotten his name now, uh, well, bloody Fred, you know, because she's off Fred. But uh, even even he is like unhappy with his lot in life. And uh, that's why he kind of is keeping these, you know, banned materials and whatnot. Let's skip a bit further in because I'm like a third of the way through this review. And uh, I don't want to, like I say, I don't want to go on for too long. Plus, it's going to be a nightmare to edit, let's face it. Yeah, I think uh, I think one of the big themes of the book is is love and sex and the distinction between the two. I mean, you get this contrast between um, Offred, you know, her former life when she's actually in a relationship with a man that she loves, you know, and building, building a family. And then the contrast of that with a man that she has to have sex with for procreation purposes. I, I think there's a lot to be said throughout this book about the distinctions between love and sex. I agree, Dane. I would still do that. And actually, I might stand more chance now because I can pretty much drive. Like, go and get some driving lessons, past Dane. Then you would have already passed your test. That's why he's called past Dane. I did notice that, or I was thinking about that more this way around. I don't know if I picked up that it was uh, The Handmaid's Tale, that the title is a, a Chaucer reference. I don't know if I picked that up on my first read, but I was very aware of it this time around. And uh, it just made it interesting because I just, not too long ago read uh, The Wife of Bath's Tale. Also notice that this time round as well, the uh, types of uh, cassette tapes that these you know journal entries or whatever were recorded on. One of them was folk songs of Lithuania, which, uh, fun fact, Lithuania and Latvia. There's a lot of uh, sort of discussion and debate about who has the largest historical kind of folk song uh, uh, collection. Now that was a remarkably accurate uh, like statement there because this was filmed in March I think and it did it went on to become my book of last year which is why I read it. I don't think I would still stick with a five out of five though. I think I would downgrade it very slightly to a four point five out of five. It was still very good. I still really enjoyed it. I mean, it's obviously it's a haunting tale. The audio book was great as well. Really well performed. Just yeah, I mean, it's just one of those books that I think is just going to be an all time favorite for me. So yeah. All right, so I tried something a bit new with this video. Let me know what you thought of it. And if you thought it worked out, I could potentially try and do this more with other stuff. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to be a little bit a little bit different and not just do the same old videos all the time. So also, if you have any kinds of videos that you would like to see from me, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, thanks as always for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read this book as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts. Hit that subscribe button for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.